I hope so. I'm not angry at you. I wish I could help you. A story about a man who used to be my old principal. So talking like over a decade ago, I used to teach at an Islamic school. And he was the principal. He was an older gentleman from Thailand. And what happened is I, I taught at the school for about two years and then I moved. And I hadn't kept in touch with the principal. I hadn't seen him or anything. So recently, uh, a few months ago in fact, I went to a conference and it just so happened that he had moved to that city. So I saw him after 10 years. And at this point, he's older, he's, he's probably in his 70s, he's, he's, he's retiring actually this year. So I found out that some things had happened to him over these last 10 years. One, one of the things that happened is his wife, his beloved wife, she had gotten cancer and she had passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna May Allah have mercy on her soul. And something else happened. Shortly after the loss of his wife, his son, who was only around 21 years old, was delivering pizzas. And one of the people that he was delivering pizzas to, or someone that he met uh, while he was delivering pizzas, slaughtered him, just cut his neck, just like that. Just killed him like that. So this man gets a call at three o'clock in the morning, and the call is basically, your son is gone, just like that. No warning, nothing. That's what I call a blow. That's a blow. Your son is gone. So I was, and I heard this, it really shook me. And then I sat down and I, and I talked to him. And I asked him, I need you to tell me how you, how you coped with that. I need you to teach me how you coped with that. And he told me what happened. He said that when he got the call, you know, obviously he was in shock. And he said he started to sort of pace around the room and said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun, and trying to process what had happened. And, and he's trying to process this, but what really absolutely floored me, and in fact, it recently became a news story, some of you may have seen, is that he says to me, when, I'm, when I was talking to him, he says to me, I tried everything to meet with his and I said, why? Why do you want to meet with this killer? He said, for two years now, I have been trying to have a meeting with his killer. And his killer is in maximum security jail. You can't meet like, he couldn't. The lawyers are like, you can't. And he said, please, just make an exception. Allow me to meet with him. And I asked him, why? Why do you want to meet with the, with the killer? And he said, because I want to teach him. I want to give him I want to forgive him. I want to forgive him and then I want him, watch this. He said, I want to forgive him and then I want him to be in the same place with Salahuddin, my son. So this isn't like a fairy tale. This is like a real person now, right? A principal of a school. Can you imagine that? The ability to do that. He, he said, I want to forgive him and I want him to be in the same place with my son. I want him to not only do I want to forgive him, but I want him to be forgiven by God and I want him to enter paradise with my son. That's what he said. And that was the reason why he wanted to meet with him. He wanted to forgive him and give him the truth, the message so that he could be forgiven. They actually, if you go and you search it up, they made a news story out of it. He finally got to meet him in court, literally like a week or a week and a half ago. And he went and he hugged the killer. This is all on tape. He finally got to meet with him in court. He hugged him and he said on behalf of... On behalf of me and my late wife, I forgive you for what you've done. Why I tell this story is because it's a powerful testament to the power of Iman. That's it. These kinds of things are absolutely impossible without Iman. This stuff doesn't happen.
to have this type of response, this type of resilience in, in trials that I couldn't even imagine. And I would pray every day to be saved from, to be protected from. I wish I could help you as I help my son to be a good citizen. If Salahuddin were to be here, if he alive, he will forgive you. That's the way he was, that's the way he is. I'm not angry at you for being part of hurting my son. I'm angry at the devil. I blame the devil, the devil, who misguiding you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you. Man. I want you to know that. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. Mr. Wilfer, do you wish to make a statement? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry about what happened with you. But I do applaud you, because it takes a powerful man to know that somebody has hurt them and do what you, get up there and say what you just said. I have a child. She's I can't imagine the hurt, the pain, the vision. Thank <laughs> you.